So when is a square not a square? Well, when it's got circular polarisation. So in this video we're going to take a look at making a simple patch antenna but this time it's got circular polarisation. So this method can be used to actually add circular polarisation to many antennas just by having this dog leg feed here. So you've got the main feed coming in at the top here but uh, the second feed is slightly delayed by having this dog leg here, quarter wavelength down here and then a feed into the bottom here. So let's get the tools out and uh, we'll have a look at uh, how you make one of these. So to make this simple patch antenna with circular polarisation, a lot of the methods that uh, you will use to build this are the same as the last simple patch antenna video that I did. So I'll link that down below in the description. And uh, of course we're going to be using copper tape as our main material that we did in the last video. But uh, this time we're going to cut out a circle but we're going to actually use that for our back reflector and our main element is going to be a square here but it's not quite a square because two of the sides opposing sides here are 43 millimeters long and the other two opposing sides are actually 44 millimeters long so it's slightly longer here than here but uh, only by one millimeter so it's not quite a square so we'll make the back reflector first which is a circle so because we want a 62mm diameter circle we're going to measure off with our compass at 31mm to give us our radius and I'll just try and find a position here where I'm not wasting too much of the copper and then simply draw yourself a circle and then we can go ahead and cut that out and put that to one side. So now we're going to cut out our square pattern, which is not quite a square, as I said. But uh, I find it a lot easier if we start off where we know we've got a straight edge along here and then a straight right angle here on this corner. And it's not quite straight here because I have cut some off. Now, I don't have a set square or anything, but what I have got here is a piece of cardboard. And this angle here is exactly square at 90 degrees. So I'm just going to use that to actually give me... A straight edge on this side here so now that I know all my measurements that I do off this side and this side are going to be exactly square because that's a perfect right angle so now that we've got our circle and our square cut out although really I should be calling this a rectangle because it's not quite a square I'm going to mount them onto some card now just to uh, add a little bit of strength to them so uh, there's a bit more to the actual structure of the antenna itself and again do it a little bit at a time just so uh, you get most of those kinks out it's nice and smooth and then we can go ahead and cut this out of the card so now we're going to actually mount our element onto some card and how I do it, I get a piece of card and I make sure I've got a nice straight bottom to that card that I can mount onto and I mount it vertical in a diamond shape like that and I have the longest side here which is 44 millimeters at the top here because my first feed point is actually going to connect there and this one here which is the 40, uh, 43 millimeters uh, that takes the second feed point at the bottom here and then what we can do is you can cut out here and here draw a straight line there and cut that off and then we've got plenty of space here to mount our feed points to and we can trim off any excess when we get the feed points mounted so now we're going to actually make the feed points into the antenna itself and what we've got here we've got uh, this wider piece of copper here that's uh, actually exactly one quarter wavelength long so it's uh, 31 millimeters long and uh, I've got this uh, copper tape here this is actually six millimeters wide and this piece here which is uh, the quarter wavelength is exactly six millimeters wide these two shorter ones here that actually lead into the element I've actually cut this in half so it's uh, three millimeters wide the reason I've done that is because this thicker piece here actually matches the impedance back to 50 ohms I didn't have that in there would have a slight impedance mismatch now you could buy some of this copper tape but really 
I've got a piece of offcut here and you can actually trim this down and actually use some offcut to make your feeds but uh, you want to stick to around six millimeters for this piece here and three millimeters for the two feeds and that way you've got your uh, in uh, impedance match to the actual coax so I've got my pieces of copper cut out and like I've said this is exactly 31 millimeters long quarter wavelength these not so much because these are going to be de determined by where we're going to position this piece so this piece we're going to position first and you should be able to see I've just put a little score where the center of this uh, piece is and what we're going to do is we're going to match it up to this element again just eyeballing it again and we're just having it just a fraction away so it's not touching so you're talking about a millimeter maybe two millimeters from this corner here so as close as you can get it without actually touching and that's where we're going to place this and try and keep it nice and straight so now we're going to connect our feeds up and what I want to do is actually apply it to the outside of this just so the inside keeps to that wavelength so what we can do is add some tin on the edges just to make sure we've got a nice contact but the inside of this should be uh, exactly a quarter wavelength and now we'll do the same with the bottom one and this is probably going to be enough So what I've got here, I've got a block of corrugated cardboard and uh, it's just strips of corrugated cardboard, glue them together to give me a block exactly 15 millimeters in depth. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use that as a spacer between the two elements of the antenna. So we've got exactly 15 millimeters in between them. I've also put a little hole in uh, the reflector and the driven element part here and I put the hole just there. Uh, so we can feed some coax through and solder onto that but what I'm going to do now I'm going to tin up these uh, joins here just to make sure we've got uh, good connectivity throughout this uh, antenna so what I've got here I've got an SMA connector which I've crimped onto a very short piece of coax and I've stripped the wires back into this T shape so uh, we can have the connector coming in uh, at the side so it's sandwiched in between the two elements so first of all I'm going to actually glue the spacer in between the two elements first I'm just using a Pritt stick uh, glue stick so get that in the center of the circle and then glue the driven element on so this diamond shape now it's got to uh, go in the middle of that reflector and of course really you could actually make that uh, diameter of that reflector slightly bigger if you wanted to as well it wouldn't uh, really hurt anything so now that the glue is actually dry I've got my uh, little uh, SMA connector with the uh, coax and I haven't uh, soldered it in place yet it's still dry but I've just positioned it in such a way where I can bend this coax at a right angle bend and then hopefully I should be able to just hot glue that in place on the back of that cardboard and uh, it should uh, hold it just fine and uh, no fear then of uh, actually ripping it out from the uh, cardboard elements here so that's the antenna finished like I said um, hot glue on there to hold that in place and soldered the coax onto the uh, reflectors like so and to be perfectly honest these uh, two videos that I've just done on these uh, simple patch antennas this is probably about as um, far as I'd go without uh, actually getting out the uh, chemicals and using PCB etching there are so many designs on uh, patch antennas I think there's more designs of patch antenna than any other kind of antenna out there if you uh, are interested in uh, this kind of thing then just have a look on uh, Google results for patents for um, patch antennas there are thousands and thousands of them and you can get really elaborate patch antennas but um, like I said as far as uh, 
making them by hand like this goes this is probably about as far as i'd go um i probably will do some uh, more patch antennas in the future but it will be uh, pcb based etching and uh, there's some really really good designs out there and some really good uh, fractal antennas as well which uh, are really really interesting in themselves but uh, let's give this a little test and uh, see how powerful this is and uh, what i'll do i'll connect it uh, we'll have a look at the uh, test router at uh, a distance about 45 meters away a couple of brick walls that it goes through it's uh, always the same with all the antennas that i, I uh, test but uh, we'll have a go and then uh, what i'll do i'll connect a uh, circular polarized antenna up to the router so we've got uh, this one uh, running off the um, alpha card and a circular polarized antenna on the router and then we should see a, a really big increase and a really strong signal when you've got two uh, circular polarized antennas um, working together and uh, of course when you're looking at circular polarized antennas they've got to be going the same way so this one is going um, anti-clockwise if you wanted it to go clockwise you'd have to just flip that upside down so you've got the uh, main feed coming in at the bottom here because uh, what happens is the uh, actual two feeds the the signal is traveling at the speed of light and uh, this one actually hits the element first because it's got less to travel but this one is delayed because of this dog leg here so uh, you're talking uh, you know nanoseconds uh, delay but it's just enough to actually get that revolving round so if you wanted it to go uh, uh, clockwise uh, circular circular polarized uh, antenna you just have to flip that round so uh, it goes back on itself so like i say i've got the test router about uh, 45 meters away going through three bit walls and i'm just moving it around a little bit now trying to dial it in because it is a directional antenna and i'm getting it into the 70s move it around a bit and get it up almost 80 percent seems to be about there so what i'm going to do i'm going to actually uh, swap out the dipole antenna on the router now and put a uh, clover leaf antenna with this same circular polarization as the uh, patch antenna and uh, we'll see what uh, kind of response we get from that so that's with the clover leaf antenna connected to the test router now and you can see the signal has increased by at least 20 percent it's uh, into the 90s now and it's uh, holding quite strong above 90 percent so uh, a big difference when you use uh, two circular polarized antennas and that's why uh, FPV uh, model aeroplane enthusiasts love it for uh, video because it really does work well with video as well so as always i hope you enjoyed this video and you found it informative and uh, i'll see you on the next one